this first week gets done, how uh, confident are you in the four-man pass rush? <laughs> <laughs> well, today was the first day of pads. You know, um, we're really, you know, with the three guys we got up front that came that last year played ball, we're, we're confident with them. We think they're better. They're doing some good things. And with those guys inside and the guys we have outside, I think we'll be in a better situation with, you know, answering your question with Rush. But, but right now, I'll be honest with you, with the young guys, you know, Davis first day pad, so that's always a reality check, you know. But, um, you know, all we're trying to get them to do is, um, you know, accept our expectations in terms of, you know, playing with effort, playing with toughness, playing with discipline. And I'll be honest with you guys, this generation of kid, really, you start from, you know, ground zero. You teach them how to listen. You know, you say, hey, what day of the week it is, and they tell you January. <laughs> so, you know, we're really trying to get them to listen, understand that this is a process, and don't get frustrated with expectations or what your mom and dad are wanting you to do or what, you know, you guys want them to do. Let's just go out and work hard, work right every day, and be the best we can be. How crucial is it to get that pressure once the season gets here consistently, every, every game, every quarter, every snap? Oh, you're talking about in terms of pass rush? Yeah. I mean, well, hell, everybody wants a good pass rush. It affects it affects the game, but um, you know, that's something you know we're going to game plan and have the guys prepare to do. How difficult is that first hit for the younger guys? I don't think it's difficult in terms of doing it physically. I just think psychologically, when you got a guy like Zadarius Hutchinson or a guy like Zach Bailey come off the ball and rock you, you haven't been hit like that before. So you got to get acclimated to it, just like you got to get acclimated to playing in the heat. But um, like I said, we just, you know, they go one play at a time. That's what we tell them to focus on where they're, and keep, you know, where their feet are, be where their feet are. And um, they're doing a good job of that. First day, you know, first week really that we've been in pads working ball, they're doing a good job. But who's running with your first team right now? Right now, Javon and Kier. Okay. Then Wanham on the end. And yeah, Wanham's on the end and um, Aaron Stern's on the other end. But really, guys, in this time of year, you know, I know, I know for y'all's purposes and what y'all are trying to get done, you know, depth charts are really important and all. But really for us, it's an organizational deal. You know, we have different people at first team, different people at second team. It don't really mean anything. It's just an opportunity for them to get reps with different people and see what they can do against different people. So, you know, and you know, it's a team. It's a team mentality. It's not a us against them mentality. So we're just trying to develop quality depth and play consistent winning football. When you look at some of the young guys, do you expect at least one or two are, are going to have to contribute on the interior this season? Well, numbers would tell you that, but I don't really put any expectations on them. I just want them to do right, practice right, learn to prepare, learn to play the game the way we want it played. And um, you know, at the end of the day, our goal is to play winning football consistently. That's what we want them to do. How impressive was it last year that Javon could play at the level he played at while dropping that weight? And what do you expect out of him this year? I just expect for him to come to practice every day with a good attitude and work hard. I mean, he developed, you know, he's young in ball. The guy's really played ball two years. Um, you know, he, you know, he hadn't been exposed to it. He hadn't experienced it. So anytime any of us experience something new, the more we do it, the better we'll get. Um, learn from things and, you know, just, you know, just all about your perception. And when, as you get experience, your perception changes and you're able to recognize things and react to the game faster, more physical, that kind of stuff. Seems like a seesaw you had. Javon trying to shed weight and Kier trying to gain weight. How have you seen the, the maturation of those two as they kind of try to get to the same level? Well, I'll be honest. If they're working right, and, and they do around here, we do a great job in the weight room, off-season program, practice. If they're working right, and now that we got Kristen in the fold and, and her nutritional aspects really shown with every player, um, unfortunately it's shown with some of our coaches too. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, if, if they're taking care of their business, they're going to develop. That's what football is. Football is a developmental game. Football is a line of scrimmage game. So up there, you know, you play close together with big guys and you're pounding somebody every play. That really takes time for kids to develop. And they'll get better over time. You can't get frustrated with them. But you got to push them and you got to let them understand the nature of that position. It's a violent position. How is Ken Loft different than he was last year? What, what are some of the things he's doing? You know, I think he concentrates on the little things more. I think he's critical of himself without be, getting down on himself. Um, you can never be pleased as a coach or a player. Good players are never pleased with themselves. And I tell them a lot of stories about people we've had in the past that we've coached. Um, Champ tells them stories about great players in the past that we've coached that when they were young, you know, they might have made 20 mistakes in a scrimmage, but they had, you know, 40 points in production. So they were they're playmakers, but they got to learn what to do and how to do it and why it's important to do that way. Do it that way. So you know we don't when they make mistakes, we don't put any you know any pressure on with that. We just want them to play hard, be physical, you know, be disciplined, don't beat ourselves, and then you learn from that. We all do. Did 
did you expect JJ to be able to get to this this weight this fast? And, and, and how have you seen him kind of advance from kind of what he did in spring practice? I'm not sure what weight you have him at, but, you know, he's, he's, he's working hard. He's a very conscientious kid. He's a tremendously talented kid. Um, he, he reminds me of some guys that are playing at the next level in terms of their quick twitch. You know, what we got to do him, get him to do is we got to get him to play with consistency. We can't have one play playing at A level, one play playing at C level. We can't do that. And um, he's working hard to do that. But he, he's, a, he's a tremendous young man and doing a really good job for us. Do you guys talk about turnovers and getting the ball? <laughs> do you read the Bible every day? Sure. Well, our Bible in football is turnovers, and we do it every day. And you know what? This is, I think, my 31st year coaching. I know I don't look it, but um, <laughs> I think, without, without doubt, we coach as a staff turnovers and creating takeaways better than any place I've been. And I've been on some damn good staffs with damn good coaches. T-Rob does a phenomenal job, phenomenal <laughs> job. The whole staff does. And, um, you know, last year was a big difference for us. So there's a couple turnovers, a lot of tech game, that, that interception down there, big game. So you look at those games, Michigan game, those turnovers, big, big deal. So, um, you know, turnovers, big plays, explosive plays, those are the two key indicators of success on a football field in a game. So, obviously, we emphasize that a lot, and the kids buy into that, and we drill it with them, and it shows up in practice and it shows up in games. How much are you looking forward to Rick Sandage's potential? Ricky's got a lot of potential. He's got a lot of potential. He's a great young man. But like I said, he's a big guy, plays inside, and, you know, I don't put expectations on um, – try, I try to get in their head in terms of saying this is what you need to do to be a good football player. And it starts with really pre-snap, get the signal, you know, then get lined up, get in a good stance, get your eyes on your right key, you know, react to whatever you do. I know everybody likes to hype these kids, but that puts a lot of pressure on guys. I'd rather not do that. I'd rather not put expectations on them. And it's a great lesson that I learned with Nick at Alabama. We had a guy named Julio Jones. He was a pretty good player coming out of high school. You know, all the media is like saying, oh, he's going to catch this and me, touch this and me, short. Dick said, hey, so wait a second. We're going to coach the kid every day to be the best and learn how to practice to be the best. All that other stuff will come. And that's what I want to do with Ricky. I don't want any pressure on Ricky. I don't want any pressure on these guys. I want them to understand this is what you got to do to be a good player. If you take care of these things, you'll be a good player. The end result will come. Now, if you don't do this, if you shortcut stuff, you don't push yourself, that ain't going to happen. But I think these kids are wired right. We do a great job. You know, Jeff does a great job with all the speakers we have talked to them in terms of psychologically, how do you got to think to be a good player? How do you got to think to be a winning team? So that, I think we're covering all of our bases on that. What's the next step for DJ Wanham? Next step for DJ Wanham? You know, DJ's a special guy now, and that's, you know, Mike coaches him. I don't want to speak for Mike, but, you know, I've watched a lot of guys like the Wanhams through the world. He's a special guy in terms of he does everything right. You know, he, he's never late for a meeting. He's never disrespectful of anybody in any part of the organization. He always handles his ba business the way you'd want him. You know, if you have a daughter, you want your daughter to marry a guy like that. If you have a son, you want your son to emulate that guy. So that's the good, best compliment I can give to DJ. Williams, has the prevalence of RPOs changed the way you coach your guys? Do you have to... All right, you know what RPO is? Well, I think so. What is it? Run, pass, option. Run, pass, option. So. Defensive line, what do we got to play? Run first. We got to play the run first. Okay, how fast is the ball out? Quickly. Real quick, less than two seconds. All right, so we got to play run first. Offensive linemen are down the field. So linebackers, first level, second level defenders, they're playing run. You know, it's, it's a real stress on the back end, really stressful on the back end. So you got to play tighter coverage. You can have some zones and people are going to eight drops and filling up voids and making, you know, clouding the window that the quarterback's looking in. But um, basically, that's the next, you know, how the football is kind of a cyclical thing. That's the thing that's hot right now, and people are doing a good job with it. Um, me and Champ were talking yesterday, walking back from practice. Man, the ball's coming out a lot faster, a lot crisper. Um, guys, I mean, there's not much you can do up front other than play the run because you always got to stop the run first. You got to always stop the run first. Now, teams that don't coach it right, Wolf does a phenomenal job coaching our offensive line with pad level, steps, everything looks exactly alike. So when you're watching on film, 1,000, 1,000, you stop the tape. All right, you don't look that the quarterback's got the ball in his hand. It's because you're not seeing that you're putting your face in somebody's face. You're playing run. Now, some guys, they'll raise up a little bit. Now, when you feel that and you got hi-hat pressure, all you can do is grab and jerk. If you're in the face of the quarterback, you want to get a hand up. If you're on the backside of the quarterback, you want to continue to rush the quarterback. So, I mean, it's a challenge. It's a challenging concept defensively that we got to defend. And the best answer is, hey, you know what? we got to get tight coverage. And if they blow it when they're running their read zone and the tackle don't fan on the end and we get a shot at the quarterback, 
we need to we need to come hit that quarterback where whoever's calling them plays say, damn, is it worth getting a six yard completion and my quarterback getting drilled and having to play with my second quarterback? Right. That's that's the trade off of those kind of things. And you say the next evolution is, could, is zones that might confuse those quick decisions. Well, I mean, tight man to man is the best thing to do if you can cover them up, knock the ball off of them, get them in second and ten. All right, and then right. they they, they got to decide what they want to do on second and ten. But you know, you got to have variations. Offenses are too good nowadays to just play one front and one coverage. You can't do that anymore. You got you got to have multiplicity in your defense, variation in your coverage and pressure package, and confuse the quarterback. Give them something where they think, hey, this is post coverage and it's not post coverage, or hey, this is split safety coverage and it's not split safety coverage. You got to have that kind of variation. How much has the tempo that this offense is running while basically forced you to alter your sub patterns? Sub patterns, like your substitution patterns with guys, as far as well, you can't you can't substitute in pace. You know that's one thing it does do. And B Mac has done a phenomenal job implementing what his vision of pace is, and they're doing a really good job. I think the whole offensive staff's really taking that part of the offense to a new level in terms of tempo. Defensively, you cannot substitute unless there's a substitution by the offense. So, Mm -hmm. when they're going fast, we can't substitute. You know that's the name of the game, and that that is advantageous for the offense. That's why conditioning is so important for the defense. And what we got to do here, because we got the most beautiful weather in the world when it's 100 degrees and it's 85 somewhere else, we got to make sure that 100 degree weather is to our advantage. And we can play at a high level for a consistent basis, all right, and they can't. And then we can wear them out in the fourth quarter. That's that's where, I mean, you know, that's where environments like ours, that's where we got to take advantage of. How comfortable are you with the rotation on the defensive line and the depth there? I'm not very comfortable at all with um, depth right now. But I'm very encouraged by the, the kids we have being able to develop them to where they can play some winning football for us. I mean, I like to have six or seven guys, you know, but, you know, you know I, I like to eat three cheeseburgers too. <laughs> but but um, I want to I wanna have guys that can play winning football, you know, regardless. I mean, when I put you in a game, I got to depend on you and I got to trust you. If I can depend on you, I can trust you. Not just me, the whole staff, the whole team. If I can depend on you, I can trust you, I'll put you in. If I don't, just come over there, stand by me. That song, Stand By Me, right? I can't sing, but y'all probably know what I'm talking about. What's next for Kier Thomas? You know what, Kier, to me, is a guy that's it's, he's kind of an enigma. But I will tell you this about Kier. He is the toughest guy on our football team. And to me, when Coach Muschamp talks about effort, toughness, and discipline, all right, T.J. Brunson is probably the effort guy. And we've got some other, a lot of DBs that are like that, D.J. Warnham's like that. But when you talk about toughness, Kier Thomas is that guy. You know, then this one, you got, you know, other guys, everybody in that represents. So I tell him that's his edge. He, and he, and he, he buys into that because he's a little undersized. He's worked really hard to get his body bigger and stronger. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with Kier because he, he's also the guy that kids rally to because he's, he's a tough guy. You would rather have him inside than outside? Or, or is it? Hey, you got to do what you got to do, man. You got to do what you do. Don't, I mean, you know. I wish I was 210, but hey. Well, how, let me ask you this the way. How, how big of an advantage is it having a guy who can do both? Oh, yeah. Versatility is invaluable. I mean, it's, it's, it's when you got guys that can play multiple positions, do multiple techniques, that's value added. You mentioned the fact that in these RPOs, the ball's coming out a lot quicker. How much emphasis do you put on sacks in this defense or just maybe just quarterback hits or just pressuring the quarterback a little Well, bit. in every game, you know, we chart how many quick passes there are, how many RPOs, how many dropbacks, how many five-man protections. We chart what they're doing, mm-hmm. all right? But in terms of a, um, you know, sacks is, sacks is an end result deal. We really want to affect the quarterback, all right? We want to look, you know, when the ball's being thrown, hey, are we, we getting him off the spot? Are right, we affecting his vision down the field? Are we affecting his footwork and delivering the ball and his mechanics and delivering his body? Obviously, his footwork is hips below, mechanics are hips and up. But, you know, if we're pushing an offensive lineman in his body and he can't throw the ball or he can't deliver it at the angle and velocity he wants to, that's a solid rush. But with the way offense, it's not like the old days where guys are taking seven-minute drops and all that. I mean, the ball's out. So what we need to do is on all the bubble passes, all the jailbreak screens, all that kind of stuff, we need to have big guys running inside out. Because when you have a big thing hit a little thing, what happens? Usually, usually like parts fly. So the part I want flying is the football. And that's what we talk about. And another thing I tell my guys is, hey, listen, man, if you're a 300-pounder and you're running and you're making a play outside the numbers, those guys at the next level that are watching you, they're putting a check mark. All you got to do is draw a dollar sign because they're saying that's a big guy that plays with effort, likes to run and hit people, but that's a good, that's a good vision of what you want done. So 
Um, you know, it's, the, game, the game's changed a little bit, you know, but my theory on, on offensive football, if they're throwing the ball flat or they're running the ball flat, that gives us an opportunity for a nothing or lost yardage play. All right? If they're trying to puncture your defense and run straight down the hill, they get three, four, five early, they're going to get eight, nine, ten late. So you got to stop the run inside the tackles. All right? And then when they run the ball outside, throw the ball outside, hey, that's a chance to knock the ball off of them or create a negative or, loss or, or no yardage play. What did, you, what did you see from Josh Belt coming out of high school and what I guess made you want to presume then and I guess the second time around? When what did I see from there? Josh Belt out of high school? Yes, sir. I saw 6'3", 3'10", good kid. Could be coached to play hard. Did the pro bench, what, 30 something times? That's what I saw. 225, that's what you said. 225, pro yeah, bench is 225. Yeah. yeah, that's what I saw with Josh. And that makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a defensive lineman do you think he could potentially be? I think he'd be a good one. I really do. I think he's got size, he's got quickness. I think he's got a little nasty about him, and he's coachable. Do you guys have a sense of when you might be able to get him out there or not yet? I think Champ's going to cover all that with all the you know guys that you guys got questions about. He's going to cover that on Saturday.